being broadcasted live. Okay, so good afternoon. Welcome everyone to this event. I am Dr. Hoy, the principal here at ALPS. I want to express my appreciation to the Compassion Fayetteville Leadership Team for choosing this location for the kickoff Black History Month. We have a little adjustment to the program. A couple of weeks ago, our school participated in the ACT Aspire pilot testing program. And this student, this student scored the highest compositely and near perfect in all areas. So he is going to do my welcome instead. So please join me in welcoming Brian Evans. Hello, I am Brian Evans, a 10th grader at Alps. Um, I've been here for only this year, but already I have gotten into a, uh, a program to help me um, fulfill my dream career of teaching. Um, hopefully, if talks go right, I will be teaching at different schools um, as a teaching assistant on Fridays. Um, I, I, I apologize for digressing. Uh, on with the actual schedule. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Jordan, Dr. Hewitt, Compassion Fayetteville members, Fayetteville district leaders, parents, students, staff, and all of our guests, welcome. We are delighted to have you here to participate and share in the second annual Fayetteville Citywide Black History Month celebration hosted by Compassion Fayetteville. Thank you for coming. The, many of you are in attendance serves to remind us all just how the school and our community are committed to actively raising the quality of life for every child, regardless of race, creed, or circumstance, to achieve their full potential. This task is to make it all possible. We are honored to have guests from our area schools, Leverett and Washington Elementary, Raymond Junior High, and McNair Middle School, members of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, and Reggie Brassfield of KDIV, and all our media guests. Before I hand you, before I hand over to DeAndre Jones, co-leader of Compassion Fayetteville and the moderator of this program, I want to say once more on behalf of Fayetteville School District, Welcome. It's a pleasure to see so many of you all here. Today is a great day to live in the city of Fayetteville. And before I proceed, I think that we need to give another shout out to the young man who did so well on the ACT. Congratulations. And again, my name is DeAndre Jones, and I proudly serve as your host for today's press conference and the co-team leader for Compassion Fayetteville's Black History Team and Black History Month Fayetteville. It is with pride that our country has set aside February to reflect upon the achievements and contributions of African Americans. Many of these achievements and contributions have been historically overlooked, uncompensated, or appropriated to benefit other groups exclusively while depriving African Americans of the same benefits and even credit. European American achievement has always been acknowledged in America. European American heroes have always been lauded and privileged in the United States. However, on today, the nation, the city of Fayetteville, the Fayetteville Public Schools and the Compassion Fayetteville have embraced a mature understanding and acknowledging that African American forefathers, inventors, business owners, change agents, and culture does no harm to other American groups, people. And as a matter of fact, possessing the strength to honor one another bestows a higher level of honor upon all Americans, Fayetteville citizens and students, as we graciously apply the old adage, Give honor to whom honor is due. In a world where racial oppression and injustice overwhelmingly prevails, discrimination and hate drives many individuals to conduct themselves in a manner that precludes African Americans and other minorities from having a meaningful, focused life, Fayetteville, Arkansas stands strong in sustaining progressive values. 
We stand firm in the, in the commitment to protect the city's reputation of being the diversity gem of the South. Our illustrious mayor, Lionel Jordan, who can't be with, who can't be with us today, the city council, school superintendent, Paul Hewitt, and the Fayetteville School Board and Compassion Fayetteville have each committed to safeguarding the rights of all minorities, particularly sustaining and celebrating the contributions of African American citizens and students on this day, the month of February, and thereafter. Thank you so much. And again, I'm going to be serving as your facilitator, or some can even say your master of ceremonies, but I can assure you this, I won't stand before you long. <laughs> Let's turn your mic on. Okay. Thank you so very much. I am loud, and I do apologize, so we're taking care of that right now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, without further ado, we will have uh, Susan Horton, who, Susan Norton, who is Director of Communications for the City of Fayetteville. She is going, she's standing uh, um, in for our illustrious mayor, who's in Washington, D.C., snowed in. So at this time, Susan is, I'm yielding the floor to Susan, and she's going to present proclamations on behalf of Fayetteville past, Fayetteville future, and Fayetteville present. Thank you, Dan Ray. Morning, that I'm going to do my best to channel Ronald because, as you know, he is the best cheerleader this city has to offer, and he always starts his speeches with, Don't you just love this city? Yeah. 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 Um, and so, I want to thank DeAndre and Patty and all of you who have worked so hard to put together a full month of events here in Fayetteville celebrating Black History Month. I'm honored that the mayor asked me to stand in for him, and I know he's honored to be part of this kickoff event, and he really, really wishes he could be here. He would say, we in Fable have much to be proud of in our history and much to learn to make the future better for everyone, regardless of our differences. Working together, we can accomplish far more than working separately, and as always, I'm proud and feel privileged to live in this amazing city as he is proud to be in this city. The mayor was invited to present the following proclamations to kick off Black History Month in Fayetteville. As DeAndre said, we have the proclamation for Fayetteville Pass. That would be Dr. Margaret Clark. Is Dr. Clark here? Fayetteville. Yes, there she is. There she okay, is. good. Thank you, Dr. Clark. If you don't mind, you to come stand with me. And Fayetteville present, Eric Bradford, Eric. And Fayetteville future, our Mateo Pearson. Where's Mateo? All right. Woo! So. Whereas during Black History Month, we celebrate the many achievements and contributions made by African Americans to our economic, cultural, spiritual, and political development as a nation, and whereas African Americans have played a central role in our nation's history. However, much of what has been accomplished has remained unrecognized and uncelebrated, and whereas with the events of Black History Month, we seek to teach our children that America's story was written by men and women of every race, and that story will continue to be told through the lives that they themselves live. And whereas Black History Month reminds us of the struggles and personal sacrifices of African Americans and honors the great imprint they have made upon our country's landscape, and whereas in the city of Fable we encourage everyone to discover, appreciate, and commemorate the history of African Americans in our city and in the state of Arkansas during this month of celebration and beyond, and whereas the city of Fayetteville recognizes that black lives matter in Fayetteville, past, present, and future. We are committed to sustaining and creating African American participation, visibility, and engagement in every aspect of our city's culture. We extend our open heart, open mind, and open door principles. Our city's commitment is to inclusion and diversity in every African American citizen in Fayetteville now and in the years to come. Now, therefore, on behalf of Mayor Lionel Jordan, 
uh, city, uh, Mayor of the City of Fayetteville, I do hereby proclaim the month of February 2016 as Black History Month in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Fayetteville Future, and I need to take yours back and get them signed by the mayor because he's out of town. <laughs> you have a picture of all? Thank you very much. All right. Hey, can you swing around just a little bit? It's so bright. Yes, yeah, swing around this way because it is so bright that way. Perfect. Much better. being, or, uh, sorry, Andre, the Andre let us know this event's being broadcast live, and it's being broadcast live by the Voice of Diversity Radio, brand new radio station in town. I'd like to ask Reggie Bransfield to come up. The mayor also had a proclamation to celebrate Reggie's success and his, that of his co-workers um, with the Voice of Diversity Radio, so I'm going to go ahead and read this one. Whereas the Voice of Diversity, an educational nonprofit of the state of Arkansas, has communicated to the city of Fable in Northwest Arkansas a desire to be a voice for people of color in the area, and whereas Voice of Diversity has established KPIV 98.7 FM, the first urban radio station, to be a resource by which all members of our community may receive diverse broadcasts that educate as well as provide music and entertainment. And whereas the Voice of Diversity is committed to working with Northwest Arkansas officials to bring diversity to the legal, business, and education sectors of Fayetteville, Arkansas, and surrounding areas, and where, whereas KDIV 98.7 FM may operate as a staple station in Northwest Arkansas that enhances the quality of life for both locals and transplants, and now, therefore, on behalf of Lionel Jordan, Mayor of the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, I do hereby proclaim Monday, January 25th, 2016 as Voice of Diversity Day in Fayetteville, Arkansas and encourage all citizens to support the efforts of the Voice of Diversity in any way possible to ensure the success of this new educational and entertainment resource. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. And thank you, sir, for accepting the proclamation on behalf of Faithful Past, Faithful Future, and Faithful Present. At this particular time, we will have words of encouragement from Dr. Paul Hewitt, Superintendent of the Fayetteville Public Schools. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay, I'm going to adjust this so you can hear me. How's it sound in the back? Can you hear me back there okay? Yeah, when, when Dr. Hoy asked me to talk today, she didn't tell me how long. And now that I realize it's on radio, wow, this is really great. <laughs> you know, it's just an honor for me to be here, and I do want to share some thoughts with you and some experiences and talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. So. One of the nice things is, many of you may know, I'm just a couple months away from a retirement. It will be my third or fourth retirement. I've sort of lost count of them as I go through. But one of the nice things about that is, is when you get to that point in your life, you can say whatever you want to. And the worst thing that happened is they run you out of town. But you're going anyway, so it's not a big issue. But I hope that isn't what happens to me a day after I'm done. Those of you who know me know that I spent the first 62 years of my life in California. Uh, it wasn't until then that we moved to beautiful Northwest Arkansas. We discovered Arkansas because my son was stationed in the Air Force and was stationed at Little Rock, and we came to visit him. And I can honestly say to you, 
If my son had not been stationed at Little Rock Air Force Base, I am sure that I would never have stepped foot in a southern state during my entire life. You see, I grew up in an area in California that was heavily well integrated. And I grew up with people of all different colors and nationalities. I had, as an athlete, I had many of my friends were black. They were my teammates. They were my friends. In college, I was on the track team at San Jose State College in 1968, when the Olympic Project for Human Rights was founded. This movement resulted in one of my teammates, Tommy Smith, making a protest on the Olympic gold medal stand during the 1968 Olympics. I learned from my teammates on that team the challenges that were faced by black Americans in the United States. I didn't see it as a kid, but I saw it when I traveled with them uh, to other states for meets, and I saw what they, they experienced during those trips. In 1971, my wife and I were both teachers. We bought this little camper truck, and we decided we'd take this camper on a trip around the country and tour the entire country and see how beautiful this country was. And we went across the country, we went up the East Coast, we went up under the Great Lakes, back across Canada, Trans Canada Highway, for two and a half months. It was a fantastic experience. But we never stepped step foot in a southern state. We skirted just north of the line. And as I reflect back now, I think to myself, I wish we'd by chance happened through Northwest Arkansas, because I wish we had seen Fayetteville. See, in 1954, the United States Supreme Court, in the case of Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, found that segregating black children and putting them in separate schools was unconstitutional. This case was like many Supreme Court cases in that it was a setup. It was held in Topeka, Kansas, because Topeka, Kansas was one of the few states, few cities and school districts uh, in the country where they actually had very equal facilities for blacks and whites. Had that case not been done in Topeka, Kansas, then the Supreme Court very well had gone back and said, these aren't equal, go back and make them equal. That would hold us to the doctrine of Plessy versus Ferguson of having separate but equal facilities which may have carried on to today. But because those facilities were very close to equal, the Supreme Court came out and said that separate but equal is inherently unequal. It's hard for me to imagine a, a time when people had separate drinking fountains, separate restrooms, separate places to eat, separate places on the bus to sit. I think there are people in this room right now, in fact, I know there are people in this room right now who went to fully segregated all-black schools. Times sure are changing and have changed, and thank goodness they have. I'm proud to be in Fayetteville, and I'm proud to be the superintendent of this school district. And one of the things that, that makes me feel good is every day I walk in that district office and I see on the wall on the, on the column right outside the door I pass every day, a plaque that commemorates the fact that on May 21st, 1954, the Fayetteville School Board voted unanimously to integrate our schools. That was only four days after the Brown versus the Board of Education decision came down. Four days. Uh, I know it's arguable, but I believe we were the first district in the South to make that decision. Now today, for us, that sounds so easy. Well, they just got together and they had a vote. It sounds so easy, but it was not easy back then. The board members were very clear about the fact they were going to take that action. And yet the newspaper re reported very little about it. The fear was, had they reported, segregationists from other places in the South would have come here and created chaos, as they did in several other communities within the South who made that decision. Superintendent Wayne White at the time was under incredible pressure from other superintendents and school board members not to integrate the schools. Although the board was very open about their intent, 
Again, it was kept very quiet. In 1955, in the fall, several schools refused to play Fayetteville High School if they brought their black players to play on the team. Coach Harry, Coach Harry Vandegrift allowed the players to vote on whether they would forfeit the games or not. And all the players voted unanimously to support their teammates and not play those games. Within the DNA of Fayetteville Public Schools is a gene that promotes fairness and equity in what we do. It isn't just fairness and opportunity for black students and white students. It's fairness for Hispanics, Asians, Native Americans, students with disabilities, and equal opportunity for both our male and female athletes to be able to excel and reach their maximum potential, and the rights of those who live their lives a little different from what is called, quote, traditional. I've been in public education since 1969. And one of the things I say about being in public education is that we get to see all of society. So many people live what I call their lives behind the gates. They live in a gated community. They get into their car and they drive their car to their work and they park in their private lot. They work and they spend their day there and they come home and they drive back to their gated community and they're able to live a very sheltered and isolated life. In public school, we get to see everything. We get to see everybody. We get to see society, what it looks like, and where it has its warts. So here's my observation on what I've seen in those over 40 years of public education and looking at what our society is and where we are. It's a little bit like a tale of two cities. It's the best of times, and it's the worst of times. The good news is things are getting better. I see far less racism in our schools. I think we are really blessed in Northwest Arkansas. Our kids in public schools really do develop deep friendships despite the color of their skin or the preferences that they have. Yes, there are occasional times when things break down. Yes, I still see people riding around in their pickup trucks defiantly waving the stars and bars on the back of their truck. It's sure been getting a lot better than it was. 20 years ago, I had parents coming to me protesting gay teachers and demanding that their children be taken out of their classes and not be exposed to those people. Oddly, I also had some parents saying, I want them in those classes because they're really great teachers. <laughs> you know, today we rarely face this. And some teachers who I think are gay are actually some of the finest teachers and probably most respected teachers we have within our school district. This is the best of times, but it's also the worst of times because things haven't been changing fast enough. Oddly enough today, schools in the United States are more segregated than they were at the time of Brown versus the Board of Education. Students today are more racially isolated than they ever have been in history. We're resegregating our schools based upon housing patterns, charter schools that are selected to pick off only certain students. In other areas, we've actually been moving backward. That's why it's so great to have a group like Compassion Fayetteville, because we must not never ever forget or become complacent about where we are, because we haven't yet arrived. I was a child in the 50s and the 60s, and I thought I genuinely thought racism and prejudice would disappear with my generation. It hasn't. We've still got a long way to go. And it's groups like Compassion Fayetteville that have to remain the conscience of our community 
to make sure that someday we chain, attain that goal of eliminating prejudice, prejudice and racism. Thank you, all of you, who are part of this organization for what you do to continue to make this the kind of community where a guy who avoided the South wants to come and live and spend the rest of his life. So thank you very much. Thank you for those encouraging and inspirational thoughts. And at this time, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, introduce and present and thank the members of Compassion Fayetteville, the Black History team, for their hard work. Uh, located at the very back of the room, I believe there's a table on the left side. On that table, there's information about about uh, the Black History Month of events in Fayetteville that this community, this group has worked particularly hard on. And uh, we've been planning since I uh, since the beginning, since the, the middle of 2014. So I would be remiss if I didn't recognize each of these individuals quickly for their contribution to the city of Fayetteville. Mary Cochran, and when I call your name, please stand. Dr. Angela Courage, Connie Crisp, Joseph Daniels, Michelle Gray, Tommy Caston, Nancy Harris, Latour Hicks, Dr. Denise Hoy, Chase Jones, Andrew Kilgore, Lindsay Leverett Higgins, Noah Meeks, Stanley Rest, Karen Hannah Town, Jimmy Whitfield, Diane Williams, Ed Williams, Russell Sherman, Christy Pollock, who is not an, an official member, but she's responsible for the Black History Team calendar, uh, Anna East Carliner, and of course, my partner, my co-partner in crime, Patty Williams. <laughs> Thank you for giving the city of Fayetteville your time and your talent. Thank you so much. And uh, during this time in our program, we will hear from Mr. Mateo, Mateo Pearson, and he's going to tell us what Black History Month means to him. So at this time, I yield the floor to Mr. Pearson. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mateo Pearson, and I'm a senior here at Alps. And to be honest, I haven't really thought about what Black History Month means to me until I was given the task of, to tell everyone. But um, uh, to me, it feels like it's really overlooked, especially in my generation. Um, it's not really like brought up in like schools as much as it used to be during elementary school or during secondary school or anything like that. And I think I think that's a problem today. Um, my career goal is to become a civil rights attorney and to promote events like this one and this community um, as a productive measure of bringing people of all races together to promote equality and unity in all lives of American people. Um, I'd like to say much attention and much appreciation is given to Compassion Fayetteville for bringing awareness to this issue and the schools for collaborating with this organization for allowing myself and other black students a voice to express what life is like for teens in today's society. With social media affecting many of our lives, the challenge to cope is difficult. Unity, acceptance, and tolerance should be a daily action, and we all should focus our efforts to unite on a daily basis. Our issues are ongoing, and we must help facilitate and get involved to make sure our voices are heard and we are seen as assets to the community by its problems. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And during this and during this juncture in our program, 
uh, I have to say this, a celebration in Fayetteville wouldn't be a celebration without the gentleman of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. So with that being said, I'm going to turn this part of the program over into the hand. So thank you very much. Thank you for those encouraging and inspirational thoughts. And at this time, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, introduce and present and thank the members of Compassion Fayetteville, the Black History Team, for their hard work. Uh, located at the very back of the room, I believe there's a table on the left side. On that table, there's information about about uh, the Black History Month of events in Fayetteville that this community, this group has worked particularly hard on. And uh, we've been planning since I re uh, since the beginning, since the, the middle of 2014. So I would be remiss if I didn't recognize each of these individuals quickly for their contribution to the city of Fayetteville. Mary Cochran, and when I call your name, please stand. Dr. Angela Courage, Connie Crisp, Joseph Daniels, Michelle Gray, Tommy Caston, Nancy Harris, Latour Hicks, Dr. Denise Hoy, Chase Jones, Andrew Kilgore, Lindsay Leverett Higgins, Noah Meeks, Stanley Rest, Karen Hanna Town, Jimmy Whitfield, Diane Williams, Ed Williams, Russell Sherman, Christy Pollock, who is not an, an official member, but she's responsible for the Black History Team calendar, uh, Anna East Carliner, and of course, my partner, my co-partner in crime, Patty Williams. <laughs> Thank you for giving the city of Fayetteville your time and your talent. Thank you so much. And uh, during this time in our program, we will hear from Mr. Mateo, Mateo Pearson, and he's going to tell us what Black History Month means to him. So at this time, I yield the floor to Mr. Pearson. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mateo Pearson, and I'm a senior here at Alps. And to be honest, I haven't really thought about what Black History Month means to me until I was given the task of, to tell everyone. But um, uh, to me, it feels like it's really overlooked, especially in my generation. Um, it's not really like brought up in like schools as much as it used to be during elementary school or during secondary school or anything like that. And I think I think that's a problem today. Um, my career goal is to become a civil rights attorney and to promote events like this one in this community um, as a productive measure of bringing people of all races together to promote equality and unity in all lives of American people. Um, I'd like to say much attention and much appreciation is given to Compassion Fayetteville for bringing awareness to this issue and the schools for collaborating with this organization for allowing myself and other black students a voice to express what life is like for teens in today's society. With social media affecting many of our lives, the challenge to cope is difficult. Unity, acceptance, and tolerance should be a daily action, and we all should focus our efforts to unite on a daily basis. Our issues are ongoing, and we must help facilitate and get involved to make sure our voices are heard and we are seen as assets to the community by its problems. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And during this and during this juncture in our program, uh, I have to say this: a celebration in Fayetteville wouldn't be a celebration without the gentlemen of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. So, with that being said, I'm going to turn this part of the program over to the hand. Okay. 
being illustrious Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity as they step up to the they step over to my history month. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. First, I'd like to say thank you all very much for being here. Thank you very much for allowing my fraternity to be part of this organization. We do take in pride of the fact that we are number one. We were founded December 4th, 1906 at Cornell University, Ithaca, New York. So we led the pack. So it's my honor to present to you my brothers from Kappa Kappa Chapter, University of Arkansas. Brother, Brother Gore, Brother Robinson, and Brother Boyd. Let's give them a hand. They're going to step up and do like history month. We're here today to kick off Black History Month, but before we get started, I want to let you all know that Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is Black History. Like my great brother, Brother Cover said, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was founded December 4th, 1906 on the college campus of Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. The first black Greek letter intercollegiate organization established. We live by the aims of many deeds, scholarship, and love for all mankind. As leaders such as Martin Luther King Jr., Thurgood Marshall, W.E.B. Du Bois continue to uphold. And today, we are here to let you know who we are. So without further ado, we are the cat book. Hey, 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 hey,